Hi everybody, this is a liver transplant and hepatic surgery channel. This time I'd like to discuss the video dedicated to ex vivo liver resection and auto transplantation. Let's start from the short recap on hypothermic liver resections. Why do we actually need a hypothermic liver resection? The thing is, in cases when leisure involves major vessels and we have to perform complex vascular resection and reconstruction, hypothermic perfusion buys us time. Additionally, it provides better exposure and comfortable conditions for precise vascular procedures. As a result, it enables such a complicated surgery to be almost bloodless. So this approach can potentially be applied in complex resections that necessitate extended procedure times and intricate vascular reconstructions. In situ hypothermic perfusion. Several variants of the in situ hypothermic perfusion technique have been developed and studied. The original one, described by Fortner in 1974, involved perfusing the liver with Ringer's lactate solution cold to 4 degrees Celsius through both the portal vein and hepatic artery while under total vascular exclusion. A modification of this was the anti situ technique designed by Hanun et al. In this approach, one of the hepatic veins is divided to allow mobilization of the liver anteriorly for improved surgical access, perfusing the future remnant liver with a cold solution. Belgetti's approach, on the other hand, involves dividing the vena cava above, above and below the liver, enabling total vascular exclusion and hypothermic perfusion before resection. Combination in situ hypothermic perfusion with cava portal jugular venous bypass helps maintain stable hemodynamics and prevent splanchnic congestion during prolonged total vascular exclusion. Okay, let's consider ex vivo liver resection and auto transplantation LRA. This technique includes the removal of the liver followed by its flushing and cooling with a conservation solution at the back bench. The procedure then entails extracorporeal excision of lesions and subsequent reimplantation of the liver remnant. This approach offers superior views of the liver during the surgery, enabling surgeons to meticulously remove lesions and resect and reconstruct a major vessels involved in the tumor, similar to in situ or antecedent hypothermic resections. Thus, it is particularly suitable for the most complex cases. Given that this procedure involves intricate and prolonged work on the back vein, it's essential to use one of the methods that prevent hemodynamics problems and venous congestion. Therefore, it needs to be managed either with cavaportal jugular venous bypass or with cover replacement and the temporary application of a portacaval shunt. Okay, let's take a look at this surgery. The patient is suffering from advanced hepatic alveolar echinococcosis. As you can see, the lesion involves the retrohepatic IVC and the entire right lobe of the liver. It also extends to the rectus sinus and worse, longitudinally involves the middle wall of the left hepatic vein. You can also notice the hypertrophy of the left lateral section in response to occlusion of the right portal vein. At this point, the liver panhyma is partially divided. All main vessels have been isolated and prepared for liver removal from the abdominal cavity. You can see the portal vein. Further on, the lesion surrounds the portal vein. I have fitted a vascular clamp under the portal vein and did a test clamping the portal vein. The artery is also dissected free. I apply balder clamps and cut the artery between them. Now I close the clamp of the portal vein at the confluence of the splenic and superior mesenteric vein. We now clamp the inferior vena cava in the infrahepatic section. Then apply a Satinsky clamp on the IVC above the liver. Thus, the liver is under a total vascular exclusion. We then cut the portal vein. Next, we try to approach the inferior vena cava and transect it at the infrahepatic part.
and after that above the lever. As soon as the lever is handed over for flashing with a preservation solution, we proceed to replace the inferior wind cover with the prepared clear preserved graft. The video is speed up at this stage. First, we form the posterior wall with the running suture. Then the arterial wall. The vascular clamps are repositioned. And we proceed to the second anastomosis in the same manner. Considering the diameter's mismatch, we tie the knot such that to leave a small growth factor. Now we proceed to the forming of the temporary portrait caval shunt. I release a small portion of blood to prevent clot formation. And now we make a lateral incision in the vena cava to perform the anastomosis. Here we use a parachute suture with proline 5O. We precisely tighten the suture on the posterior wall. And then proceed to regular running suture on the anterior wall. We release the clamps. The temporary direct protocol shunt is completed. After this, we commence with the back table stage. We carefully examine the liver in the resection area. Determine the course of the left hepatic vein. We expose its wall with the cuser. We then open up the vein to leave the wall fixed to the lesion on the affected side. Now we can continue the parenchymal division. Small vessels are cut between clips.
Here we can see the umbilical plate. We expose it with the ultrasonic dissector. The bile duct is opened and then transected. The vessels included in the umbilical plate are also ligated. And we proceed to dissect the sinus praxi in the left portal vein. We try to preserve as long a segment of the left portal vein as it possible. A metallic bougie is introduced into the artery of the remnant liver. We complete the artery dissection and now the remnant liver is completely detached. We ligate the artery of the segment 4 and check the bile ducts. Now we are preparing the graft of poor plasty of the left hepatic vein with venous patch. In this way we perform the plasty of left hepatic vein. As soon as we have completed the left hepatic vein plasty using a patch from a crear preserved graft, we proceed to ductoplasty. We join the medial walls of the bile ducts to create a common orifice. Next, we move on to the getting our outer graft back. At this stage, we reapply the vascular clamps. I make a side incision on the IVC replacing graft and begin restoring the outflow, starting with the back wall. I apply a holder to the middle of the posterior wall of the anastomosis and form the posterior wall. Then we form the anterior wall. Once it was done, we flesh out the preserving solution and proceed to the portal vein anastomosis. After reversion of the preserving solution, we close the incision in the inferior vena cava. Using a stapler, we divide the portal caval anastomosis, we then remove the clamps, restoring the blood flow through the inferior vena cava. We then need to lengthen the portal vein. We use a vascular crab preserving graft for this purpose as well. After setting up the proximal anastomosis, we perform a distal one with the left portal vein of the liver remnant. Now we are ready for reperfusion of the liver remnant. 
I'm checking the minerals and estimosis and start the integrate perfusion of the graft. And I'm handling some blading. I'm performing hemostasis from the transection plane. Now we are preparing the arterial pad for anastomosis. We form a wide arterial anastomosis with a continuous suture using Praline 70. The anastomosis is completed. We carry out arterial reperfusion of the liver. Immediately after, we identify the arterial hemorrhage from the umbilical plate and manage it. So, the liver autograft is fully revascularized and appears good. After assessing the liver blood flow with ultrasound, we can proceed with RU and Y loop in order to make biliary reconstruction. The procedure is pretty standard. We typically perform a side-to-side -side anastomosis. For this, we cut through the serous and muscular layers of the intestine. We create a single row anastomosis using a PDS-50 continuous suture. Having completed the posterior wall, we open up the lumen of the intestine and move on onto the anterior wall. We carefully check the anastomosis and go on to the next stage. We make a small lateral incision in the intestine loop to make a bile drainage. After that, we apply several sutures fixing the serous layer to the mucosa. We then start hepatic hygienostomy. We use interrupted suture on the back wall. Afterwards, we tie the sutures on the back wall interluminally, leaving one for securing the external stand. We place an external stand. We secure the stand with the remaining suture. And then we form the front wall with an interrupted suture as well. We tie the sutures at the end and the anastomosis is completed. Here we use a foam surgical adhesive to protect the biliary anastomosis and transection plane. Well, that's actually all I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.